position clinks in one of these games as well. So yeah. it seems like the offlane does not really need that much help. Uh, win the, the lane, you can just win it just by sheer, I don't know, damage as opposed to any sort of disable because Ricky and Clink's not necessarily known for exceptional amounts of disable, uh, but still greedy nonetheless. And in this region, I have not seen Ricky be flexed quite yet. It seems like one position seems to be the go-to. So uh, I'm intrigued. But I wouldn't hold my breath for that being the case here. Team Unique, they go to the Rubik as well as the Shadow Demon for your their supports. You've got a save in the Shadow Demon and some lockdown between the two. Of course, that save could be used to start something off, get a disruption out there. Also, the Telekinesis, which is uh, sometimes picked at that level 2 point, but normally not level 1. That, that feels like a, a little bit of lane losing if you're going to go Telekinesis level 1. Even, even if you get first blood, sometimes it just does not seem worth it because you're not doing that much afterwards. But with it, they go into the Medusa, which I think the two of us together, uh, when we've cast these few Division Two games, have yet to see that Medusa. Yeah, I, I, I think that more often than not, it's picked as like the 22nd pick because you think that... It's something that people don't really expect in the mid lane, kind of like a Meepo at, at the very end of the draft. Uh, I'm very surprised that they go for it this early on. I guess at this point, it's confirmed that you can't really stick an anti-mage into this draft, uh, unless if they want to do like, I don't know, mid timber saw, three position shaker, and then the four position Ricky. But I guess she's relatively safe. But then now the Queen of Pain is likely to go somewhere else because I imagine it's going to be a mid lane Medusa. I don't know. It, it seems strange to draft it so early on. I'm, I wonder if it's just like a unique thing to do, which isn't to say like a different thing to do, but a team unique thing to do. But it also is a different <laughs> thing to do. So I... Uh, all right, let me see. Heroes for unique. Medusa. Okay, they don't, they don't even play it that often. Wow. Okay. Maybe they like it against Ricky, which I can definitely see the advantage of. Uh, any of these melee cores who have to spend cooldowns to jump on top of Medusa, like a Slark, who has to spend Pounce, uh, a Ricky who will have to spend Blink Strike, it can be pretty good. The only thing is that Ricky is also uh, one of the healers that can deal with Stone Gaze fairly well, because if you if you time it right and you go into your Banish, uh, as long as like Ricky's considered still facing at Medusa, which I'm not sure if he is in Tricks of the Trade, then sometimes you can time out the Banish uh, because it's like two seconds and then the Stone Gaze actually kicks in. And if you're in your Banish, then you can like bypass it. The mechanics are kind of complicated and I'm not 100% sure if it works the same way with Ricky that it does with other heroes, but they, I don't know. It's uh, definitely a lot of team fight now as they finish it off with Mars. Yeah, Mars makes this a uh, pretty interesting draft. We usually see like a Mars uh, second or third item go into like a Blink Dagger. And, um, you know, you Blink in, you get the Arena down. That combined with, say, a Stone Gaze potentially or, or just, you know, getting a Spear. Having, like, they have control. Their team fight looks pretty good here for Team Unique. And it might make it a, and I know this is more, n nothing to do with these two teams, but make it easier to hit a Sonic Wave. Because we've seen... Uh, some Queen of Pains recently <laughs> give the old big whiff. So yeah, definitely when they're in the arena, it makes it a, bu a bunch easier to just land on your targets. Yeah, and now overall, there's just much less for the Queen of Pain to be worried about because initially, based off this draft, it was looking like she would be the first one into a team fight, and you do not want to be the first one into a team fight against a Disruptor and a Ricky as the Queen of Pain with all these silences. So now Mars should be able to tank the brunt of the damage from Empire Hope. Uh, hopefully he does go for an early Blink Tiger because I do think that that would be the best way to you know deal with like the Timber Saw or the Ricky. Um, we see a lot of Mars kind of go more aura oriented and sometimes that is the way to go. But this game, I feel like he needs to go initiation. So they finish it up with uh, DK here for the side of Team Empire Hope. And that'll be played over mid. I know DK's been pretty versatile recently. He fits the bill over mid. Has been played safely in a couple of times. Although yesterday, I will say, I saw DK, I think, lose every game. And it was picked up three of the four games or two of the four games that I covered uh, in China. I don't know if it's going to be played differently here. It just seems like people are starting to finally figure out the hero and how to deal with it a little bit better. 
is it enough in the uh, mid lane? I mean, it, it's usually a pretty safe pick over mid. Yeah, but like, why did they need to go for the safe pick? That was the twenty second pick here. That's supposed to be like a, a total game winner. Like, oh my god, we didn't remember to ban out that thing. No one feels that way about a DK. Uh, they did need push, so at least it fulfills that. Death Prophet was able to pick that. But I, it's a very underwhelming last pick because it doesn't really specifically stop any of the unique heroes from doing what they want to do. Aside from Queen of Pain, who will be going up mid against the DK, it's going to be a safe lane Medusa, and 19 is going to be playing the Queen of Pain versus the DK mid. But I, like Queen of Pain also has nothing to be concerned about. It, it'll be a relatively break-even lane where... The Queen of Pain can't necessarily kill the DK, but unless if, I don't know, Disruptor rotates and gets a glimpse off onto 19, I don't really expect the Queen of Pain dying either. So, I don't know. I uh, I don't... I, I think they just needed some pushing mid because they need to end the game quickly against a Medusa. And I don't think that a DK is enough, though. Well, was Leshrac banned also? I don't know. I feel like even Leshrac would have been better. Very strange. Yeah, DK definitely seems like one of those heroes where, you know, sometimes you see like, oh, Meepo, 22nd pit. Like, oh, Jesus. Right, but yeah. DK, it's just like, okay. Or Huskar DK. or something. Yeah, yeah, like something exciting, something that's going to be a game changer. Like DK just doesn't really fit that bill. No offense to DK. I, I think he's a very great hero. Don't want to hurt any feelings here on those DK fans. <laughs> he's, a, he's a first phase kind of pick. Uh, again, like I, I the hero is perfectly viable. It's just that... I don't really see it stopping Unique from enabling their Medusa, which will be ultimately what wins them the game, is that if this Medusa manages to... I mean, even... I can see her pretty easily going to an early Rapier this game, even though there's not necessarily any evasion to be concerned about, but that's just the Medusa is just getting an early Rapier. I don't really see Empire Hope discouraging this Medusa from doing that, so... I don't know. We'll see. Maybe Lightless just likes it in the mid lane. Uh, and he thinks that he can make a lot of space with it, hopefully. We'll have to see. Uh, I, I There's so much here, too, for the Rubik to steal. Like, that DK just adds to it. I feel like this is yeah, one of those know, games where sure. Rubik can just go off. And good luck if you have a good Rubik game. But I haven't seen Illusion play, so I'm not really certain, you know, if he's... You know, like, when I watch FY play Rubik... I'm expecting a playmaker. I'm expecting FY God. I don't know what to expect here with Illusion, but I definitely think he's got opportunity aplenty to play an amazing Rubik game with what they've got on Team Empire Hope, just to steal that away. Yeah. I mean, even, like, the the bad spells this game are still, like, pretty good. I, I, I don't really see him being disappointed with many things that he gets because he can get blinks from Ricky, which are obviously great for gap closing, the stun from DK, with Arcane Supremacy will last an eternity. Uh, Chain from Timbersaw or Chakram are both really easy to steal. And then basically all of Disruptor's spells are pretty satisfying because Thunderstrike is pretty, like, it's not easy for Akinart to, like, hide Glimpse or Kinetic Field or Static Storm with Thunderstrike because you usually want to use that to get vision at the beginning of a fight. So, yeah, I have, I have high expectations for Illusion this game. I mean, even just, like, if you get Static Storm and you throw that into just uh the arena. Uh, you know the arena thank you um it just seems like it's an overwhelming like the team fight's good right now for unique it gets that much better i'm and like you said high expectations that's exactly what i'm having right now and i'm thinking of like all the possibilities in my head i don't know you probably know the gif with uh you know the hangover three from the casino oh, all the numbers all are just going I'm, yeah i'm like <laughs> seeing all these ultimates and abilities go around in my head and i'm just like this is wild like this could be crazy mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Medusa's brain is just like mouse two. That's that's the only thing that drive needs to be concerned about this entire game is just walking around the map and getting as farmed as possible. Uh, and her team's like like freaking Shadow Demon is arguably one of the best supports to have with a Medusa for one because being able to this game is valuable either to make more illusions of her or to save her so she can get stone gaze off. But also Shadow Demon's probably the best support at making stacks. Uh, I think Coddle is probably a little bit more popular these days, but if you are a skilled Shadow Demon, you can like quad stack camps with a couple of casts of Shadow Poison. Who's, he's already bullying Mastery quite a bit on this Timbersaw. 
Yeah, four stacks make it a fifth Van score. Oof. That is uh, not fun to deal with. Still a lot of time, though, until this bounty room becomes available. Vanscore will continue to throw the Shadow Poison now over at James, who has a Fissure to try and grab this bounty rune. As there's the Fissure, but still a lot of damage and a lot of Shadow Poison for First oh. Blood. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, that kind of sucks, but at the end of the day, the Shaker was probably going to walk back anyway, because he spent half of his mana pool on a Fissure to secure the Bounty Rune, and he was going to lose at least, like, 75-80% to 80 of his HP, but that last auto attack plus the last Shadow Poison puts him in the grave, and First Blood uh, easily goes the way of Vank's score. Interestingly enough, James has also showed up to this lane with no health regen. Yeah... All that work for the bounty room, and you don't even spend your gold. Yeah, and then there was Tangos hanging out on the floor, and the Timber Saw's Courier got them, even though Airshaker TP'd to lane. And... I mean, even even more than the region, like, I would have been okay with him just getting, like, a stick. Because if he, if he knew he was going to come back to this top lane, then, well, I mean, you know you're going to be laying against this Shadow Demon who's just spamming himself silly. We'll see if he can snipe out this Courier, though. I don't know if... Oh. Van score is privy to this. <laughs> Sorry, go. I my pause button is F9. Mm -hmm. I'm not certain how Sorry Go kind of happens sometimes with uh, these pauses. <laughs> I, I, my hands never even float in that direction. But it is what it is. You never know. Sometimes, sometimes you just think that you're having a connection issue, but really, really, you just want to make sure you get the right last hit. <laughs> Dealing with Shadow Poison once again, and it seems like Vanscore's come well equipped to just annoy this Timber Saw. Although misses the last two Shadow Poisons, finally grabs that one, and now Mastery hitting the trees for a moment to try and Dude. get these creeps, and he's on the run. Ooh, oh. I think he needed that one, but he there's still four. may be dead. Can he land the fifth? Can Mastery juke around the trees? No. Uh oh. Oof. He's still looking to place more. I mean, Vanscore is such a nuisance. He's and he's going to go to the mana. high ground, actually, into the hands as it tracks. Oh, this is it. Oh, oh. the salve. Oh. Immediately cancel. Vanscore oh. gets the kill. Wow, that's a brutal turn of events. If the salve had saved him, then it would have been like, okay, fine. You know, at least he didn't die again. But losing the salve, losing that creep wave, uh, and Vanscore does not successfully get the pull off. So... At least he'll get some experience, but man, this timber saw, this is uh, not the position you want to be as an offlane timber saw. You're used to not having to worry about any sort of uh, return from the enemy support because the reactive armor is just keeping you healthy the entire time. But there's an immense amount of magic damage on the side of this dire safe lane between the shadow poison and the mystic snake. And he is still level one. Of course, he's got a full creep wave there in front of him, but it is not fun to be looking into the eyes of this Zitrax Medusa right now. Look at just how little health he has. Oh, the Mystic Snake. Oh my god. He can't... Oh my god. And Zitrax can just kind of like follow them underneath the tower. He can't really feel confident going for this because Mystic Snake's going to be up again and he's going to be walking into the creep wave. I don't know if Zitrax... He's probably afraid of getting Fissure blocked out so he doesn't want to go too deep. So it seems like Mastery will be able to get at least this wave uncontested, but... Yeah, this is a. This is not. We, we haven't even looked at any of the other lands. And, like, a Medusa lane should not be going this well early on. I suppose we can look at mid. 19 on the Queen of Pain versus the DK. Uh, relatively even. DK with a slight net worth advantage, but that's just because he doesn't have to spend, like, any money on regen. I don't really expect anything impressive to happen in that lane. And then bot lane, the Rubik and the Mars. Easy spear setup, but also a lot of damage coming out of the Radiant safe lane with. The Thunder Strike into the Blink Strike, so Tatake and Eknar could very easily get a kill on BZZ as they actually get a Fade Bolt into Telekinesis. Yeah, but BZZ but the other... turns around. Ooh. Tricks of the Trade did a decent chunk of damage here onto this Mars as well as the Thunder Strike, so he does not commit to that. He thought about it. He certainly looked in and was like, can I get this kill without dying? But made sure to back up and use those wand charges and then eventually get a salve, I think, from Illusion. Yeah, and Tataka got salved up also, but now this Rubik needs to be quite careful, because he could very, very easily die to this Ricky if he's not careful. 
Elsewhere 19 does grab the DD rune. It seems like both mids were contesting for that, but 19 comes out on top. You get that four minute bounty rune, neither of them having a bottle at that point, but finally 19 picks one up. He's also gonna salve back to full or close to full. So things are okay here for 19, basically even on the CS. Nope, top lane, James, five stacks of shadow poison. That won't finish and a Mystic him off. Snake, not gonna be enough, but still. Yes. As he tracks, still just sitting level four here for the moment, as Timbersaw has caught up. He's sitting level four. I'm surprised he's made it that far back. But, uh, you know, good job by Empire Hope to kind of recover in that sense. Yeah, I'm curious what this Timbersaw's game plan is going to be because I. He, he's not going to be able to like park himself in a lane and be like, yeah, this is my lane. No one, no one's allowed to come here because, like I said, there's so much magic damage. Even if Medusa leaves to go start jungling, then Queen of Pain can come in. Uh, the Mars doesn't have to be too concerned about Timbersaw. Mars probably has the toughest issue because he's a strength hero and the Whirling Death will be kind of irritating for him. But he's still very inherently tanky. You can farm with God. You can farm with God's Rebuke. So. I don't know, this, this Timbersaw pick is definitely going to get abused, I suspect. And you can see Vanscore already establishing a ton of stacks for this Medusa. Oh my god, this is this is beautiful. Whoa, okay, the jungle is full. Packed, it's at yeah. capacity. You know those signs that are up by the pool that say only 60 persons can be, well, you know, it says persons, can be in this building at one time? That's the jungle right now. They just need to make sure that they tank it on time because Timbersaw could very, very easily take it uh, as they're going on Lightless in the mid lane. They get the Ocean disruption. Backed up for a second, but he'll have Telekinesis available. The Kinetic Field comes in as well as the Sonic Wave. Ekkar aren't taking a lot of damage, but the Fissure hits on a 3. 19 glimpsed and oh, oh. blinks away. They get the kill on a Lightless. Now they look over at oh. Eknart with two stacks of the Shadow Poison on him as they've got the Shadow Strike as well as the Scream Through on James. Fade Bolt and the Fade Shadow Bolt. Poison damage gets the kill there on Eknart. And with the Shadow Strike and a couple more oh, shots, James. One more tick. Ooh, Shadow Strike. Oh, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Bye-bye. James ends up dead, and that goes three for nil in the favor of Unique. Oh, man. And Zitrax is already taking these stacks, so she is going to make sure that no one can test this. Find a Royal Jelly for her trouble as well. Yeah, things are going amazingly for Team Unique right now. This is one of the best starts I think I've seen for a Medusa. Probably watch Vanscore yeah, die here, but not the worst scenario. A worthy sacrifice. He's on a killing streak. Freaking Shadow Demon has four of the five kills on Team Unique. <laughs> And, you know, even saying all that with Medusa having such a great start to this game, he's still only sitting third on the net worth. Like, it feels like it's so much better than what it was, and maybe there was a lot more gold spent in regen that uh, we just didn't catch, but it, it, it feels like it's been so much better than where he's placed in the net worth, or maybe I'm just over-calculating here. I mean, Medusa is the kind of hero that is more than happy to sacrifice net worth for experience. And uh, as long as she's getting her levels, she's getting a lot of points in split shot, then generally you're okay with the, the turn of events. And I imagine she was probably spending quite a bit on regen as well. So still, like, don't let net worth be the, the be all end all interpretation. Things are going extremely well for her right now. She's even joining this fight in the mid lane. Uh, that is one of the earliest points I've seen a Medusa join mid, and it works out because he gets the kill on Aknar. So boost that net worth up, take the top slot, and uh, continue your hot streak or your hot start here in game one. At the same and time, given though, their... Mastery, he's, he's done a pretty decent job in experience. His net worth is suffering a little bit, but I mean, we considering the start, that was... He's done pretty well and he's got himself an open lane yeah now actually the ricky is moving out of the top lane so finds vang score gets a blink strike and the thunder strike should probably finish him off yeah. hoping to get to roche in time but roche just a uh, spectator for that one i think ricky feels pressure to start moving around because he knows that like so timbersaw is just staring at this top tier one they're like hmm if medusa's not here She's probably jungling right now, and we need to contest that. 
and Agnard is going to post up a pretty useful Observer Ward. I don't know if Zitrax is privy to that, but it seems like he's just going to go elsewhere to the bottom half of the map as they're hoping to claim both outposts, but Agnard steals the top one, so it's going to go one and one apiece. Instead, bot lane, they finish off jams. And they get the kill there on to James. Illusion gets credit for that one. Meanwhile, the Shadow Demon of Anscorp immediately came over and took away that vision. So took the vision away. They moved the Medusa bottom. And you're talking about how the Ricky now feels forced, uh, forced into this position of like starting to move and be active around the map. But usually with Rickies, we see them wait until they've got that defusal blade to do so. It, is this something that can hurt Tatake in a situation where he feels forced to do so? If he's not able to find kills, then yeah, definitely. Ricky can get kills with double defusal blade, I mean, uh, double wraith band, but it, he needs like more of his team to show up. And Citrax wisely just goes the complete opposite direction of the map. Uh, and the rest of his team is like defending mid. Unique are doing such a good job at like somehow protecting this Medusa. They see the arcane form. Uh, uh, or the Arcane Rune Dragon form on DK, and they know that he really wants to push mid. So the rest of his team immediately shows up. They can't really afford to lose this tower this early on because, as we've seen time and time again, Rickies, who don't have to deal with an enemy mid-tier 1 tower, have like such easy access to the jungles, and that's where Medusa's going to be spending a bunch of her time. So they're defending it while Zitrax just is going toe-to-toe -to -toe against a timber sub. But rest of Medusa's team is now smoked up and may be able to pick up a kill off Mastery. And Mastery a bit far forward. They've got the Timber Chain available on Illusion, but the Telekinesis is there with the spear hitting. And, well, Illusion gets the kill on a Mastery. They show up with that smoke and they clean up a Timber Saw. So 8-2 in favor of Unique. They'll continue to push over bottom, try and get this Tier 1 tower and should have it uh, dead to rights. Dude, how are they going to do the seeding in this group? Because, like, honestly, Unique is, like, the best-looking team that I've seen thus far. They've been doing... This is a team is looking better than Cyber Legacy, which is still in the tournament. Cyber Tractor got eliminated. They're looking clearly better than Empire Hope. Uh, obviously better than Nova also, which was, like, a pure open qualifier team. I, I, I'm considering them to be, like, the favorites now over Cyber Legacy, because this is just an amazing performance. Yeah, so far it's looking pretty good, and this is a team that's, you know, minus Illusion, has spent a lot of time together. Uh, and I oh, can see and that Ruby kind of chemistry. Oh, just adding insult to injury right now. And it's not even that they have, like, a huge lead or anything. It just, it looks like some clean Dota. It's, it's not like they're destroying, and they've got this 10,000 net worth lead as Eknart who end up going down there. But, you know, they are playing pretty clean at the moment for Unique. Yeah, being able to have this flawless of a laning phase as a Medusa, you really couldn't ask for much more. Now Breathe Fire picked up for the Rubik. A little, little surprising that he's just skipped Arcane Supremacy. Uh, sometimes you'll see like somebody leave just one yeah. Telekinesis, but at the same time, I feel like level one in Telekinesis is not that great. But at the same time, usually you'd see max out telekinesis when they're like, yeah, there aren't that many stuns that I can steal. Because the whole point of Arcane Supremacy is that it buffs up the stuns that you can steal. Like, if you're only going to be able to, I don't know, steal useless spells, then you might as well max out telekinesis. But like we said, there's still a lot that, of useful stuff that he can steal as now. Vanscore might go down here. Yeah. He should. He does a lot of damage there to Mastery, but it's not even just about that. It's, God, it's how he pulls all these heroes just to get a kill on a Shadow Demon. That's how desperate they are looking around the map, it feels like, or, uh, to clean up their jungle. 19. Taking a bit of damage from Tricks of the Trade, but... Well, no other commitments coming in onto this Queen of Pain. I'm a, a big supporter of her idea to go for the first item BKB. I don't think that she needs to do any damage this game as a Queen of Pain. She just really needs to stay alive in team fights. You let Medusa do the majority of the damage, you let the Mars get the setups, and she just needs to stay alive enough to, you know, keep kiting this Dragon Knight around, keep being able to jump in the back lines and pick off the supports as Lightless trying to go in. Arena? Yeah, that was a pretty ambitious commitment there, but now the Static Storm is down. They'll steal the Breathe Fire nice once again on Illusion. And they take a look to try and get this kill on Illusion as they've got the Spear that'll lock him down to the cliff. The Sonic Wave comes in, they'll get the kill on a Lightless. They look over at Eknart and need to make their way around the Fissure, or do they? Because Vanscore's already gotten the kill. 
Shadow Poison as well as the Demonic Purge being used there onto Eknard as three heroes come around towards mid for Empire Hope. However, I mean, this is already a fight that they are behind in numbers in and may not be one that they want to continue to take. 19 comes over, James in the trees and kind yes, of surrounded slam. in a bad spot. His smoke screen gets laid down, and now Tatake lifted up by Illusion and thrown down back into his own smoke screen. Not that that matters to silence him or anything, but he's back into that position, and now Mastery, he's just looking to not be involved anymore, it feels like. He all walks away. the Radiant heroes are respawning, and so they need to back off. This was all time for Medusa, which is the tracks ended up not really pushing as hard as I was hoping he would, because that was a fight that lasted nearly like a minute, but he was primarily jungling. Uh... But still, like that—that that is all fights that are happening without the Medusa, and they're still able to confidently win them. It's three and eleven. They start off with the pick off on the DK, who was trying to contest that rune, but ended up getting caught in an arena. And then Disruptor gets cl clipped by the Sonic Wave, which was very, very well positioned. Overall, like nineteen, I had seen nineteen uh, at the Starladder Miner, the last DPC event, and I, I was definitely encouraged by his performance. And it seems like his Queen of Pain has been. Significantly better than the other Queen of Pains that we've been seeing because he's been connecting multi hero sonic waves every single time and it hasn't died a single time. 2 0 and 4 right now. And again, I do think that his itemization is like the perfect option for this game as now oh, another man. arena onto the Ricky. Yeah, they had the sentry onto the cliff and now he's going to try and survive with the tricks of the trade. They're doing a lot of damage here onto Illusion. They'll get the kill onto the Rubik and now they're trying to turn this onto the Mars. The Echo Slam comes in from James. They'll get the kill onto Take. They finally take out BZZ. So two heroes down on the side of the team unique as Vanscore hits the deck as well. Three heroes die on unique. Now, of course, that's a fight without 19 or Zitrax, but one that goes favorably in terms of gold, only just by a little bit for Empire Hope. But more importantly, a lot of experience comes into their hands. Yeah, at the end of the day, did at least were successful at killing the Ricky. Uh, he popped uh, the Shadow Poison and Demonic Purge, so he did go down, but at least the rest of the fight was kind of won. The only problem is they can't get any objectives off of it, because Lightless has to activate Dragon Form just to win that fight. And mid lane tier one's already been taken. Bot lane was too far pushed, so it's a bit of a shame that they win a team fight that confidently and then can't really gain any map control off of that. Because even the supports weren't able to put that much vision down. Like Vanscore shows up now after the fight ended, and he's like, "Okay, well, I saw Timbersaw was in my jungle trying to bully Medusa out. They must have put some vision down here, but really, they just have that ward near the bot tier one." Get the stone gaze to be thrown by Zutrax, but now Lightless, he's in a bit of a bad spot. Zutrax box the Manta style coming around his 19. 19 throws a shadow strike as well as a scream, blinks away. Tricks of the trade there for the Ricky. They're trying to get some of these kills on the side of Unique onto Empire Hope. They find themselves in Earthshaker. They'll get the kill there. It's just one for now, but maybe we'll look into pressure and get some more. The tier one tower still stands for the side of Empire Hope, and they'll steal. The Whirling Death, only level one, Blink Strike forward, goes on Illusion, Tricks of the Trade, has the damage, gets the kill onto the Ricky. So they, or onto the, uh, or gets the kill for the Ricky, onto the Rubik. Whoa. Now they look over the Queen of Pain, they've got the Dragon Tail, Static Storm committed, 19 goes down, and they're looking for more. Zitrax is out of mana and might need to think about turning this one around and trying to get out of here, but the damage coming through from Empire Hope is way too much for him to handle. They get the kill on Zitrax, now they'll look over Advanced Score, and things really turning around favorable for the side of Empire Hope. It seemed like Unique were continuing to run at Empire Hope, but not doing anything to Empire Hope. Yeah, I, I think the DK must have precast the stun on the Queen of Pain, because she blinked into three, and it was prime positioning for an amazing Sonic Wave. This is like permanent disabled, so I'm guessing that she blinked in, got stunned by the DK, and then Static Storm was probably used on her, I, I guess, because whatever the case, like that was a very, very greedy blink by 19 to just you know jump into the fray like that. Uh, and if he was able to get that Sonic Wave off, they would have probably been able to continue winning that fight, but instead it costs his life and the Medusa's life as well. And yeah, things uh, slipping up a little bit there for Team Unique. Uh, maybe hoping to get that back. BZZ, meanwhile, he's got the Blink Dagger, so they do have that Blink Arena. Going Vlad's next. Uh, earlier Blink than maybe I would have thought, but not, honestly, in my opinion, the, the wrong call to make. I, I'm a big fan of Blink Mars to get that initiation out, especially when you can line it up with, say, a Telekinesis as well as a Spear. But Illusion walks down bottom. They were originally going for the Queen of Pain, but... Illusion happened to also be in the neighborhood. 
Yeah, Lightless not as quick on his fingers as he was the last time that he initiated on the Queen of Pain because he should have been able to get that stun off. You can definitely beat a Queen of Pain blink animation with a melee dragon tail, but uh, yeah, instead they had to settle for a Rubik. But I, I do agree with the, the Mars Blink Tiger. Like I said, it's it, that's the reason why I liked the Mars pick at the very end, because uh, I was hoping that he wouldn't go for pure aura items, but rather help his team initiate so that the Queen of Pain does not have to be the first one into the fight. And 19 has the BKB now, so it really doesn't matter too much, as they actually get a lift up on the DK. But now they need to be certain that they can follow this up. Good arena on a two, but the Fissure comes around. Sonic Wave is there. Lightless taking a lot of damage. They'll finally drop the DK. They look over at Eknar, who drops the Static Storm. Do you end up killing off uh, Lightless and Eknar, losing Van score. Echo Slam committed by James. However, that just did not do enough for what he was looking to get. And they will get the kill there as Zidtrax finishes off the Earthshaker and picks up a Nether Shawl with the uh, Mystic Snake that bounced around into the neutrals. Yeah, I'm actually curious who will take that nether shawl because you do have to worry about a fair amount of physical damage. So I don't think Queen of Pain wants to hold this. Maybe it's like a Rubik type thing. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. But oh wow, no, Timber Saw just kind of like moseying on through. Uh, Rubik does not have any disables, so they're just gonna let him go. He's got that breathe fire quite a bit. What's weird is the Medusa was holding the nether shawl and i'm pretty sure sent it back to base in the face of the rubik <laughs> maybe no one wants it i mean like i said there is a ton of physical damage although what? illusion has no item as bzz on the run and mastery comes over now stealing the chakram disruption we'll see if that can help keep the mars alive he was able to blink out afterwards oh, and now the rick on the is in so much trouble Zitrax killing off to Take, they'll timber chain to the high ground. Mastery now needs to run, but the blink floor coming in from 19, and they're gonna put some pressure onto this radiant side. They'll continue to chase after them with the shadow strike coming through as well as the arena. Spear is there, stuns up Mastery, kind of bounces off the wall. A good fissure from a distance coming in from the airshake, but it's not gonna be enough to save Mastery. As uh, Unique get themselves a second kill, potentially a third, as James playing Ring Around the Rosie in these trees near the tower. Totem comes in, Spear's a miss, James on the run, Chakram thrown from Illusion to clean up some of these trees, and James will eventually fall. At least he does have that dagger completed, so it's not like he's perpetually being drawn away from that, but these team fights are just consistently won out by Unique with uh, little contention as long as it's 5v5. The Queen of Pain has only had to use her BKB once during that bot tier 1 fight as Vanscore actually gets glimpsed, but... It's the... Rubik they want to go after again. The spear hits onto this disruptor. They get the kill they want to BZZ. They look over at Illusion. The Chakram thrown into Akgar. Illusion doing a lot of damage, but just not enough damage. Well, it's another Dragon Form activation, so hopefully they can take the mid tier 2 off of this. Uh, seeing as how two of their best wave clearers are dead, the Rubik and the Mars, so they should be able to get some more map control. Um, but still, the clock is ticking before this Medusa just becomes impossible for these cores of Empire Hope to deal with. Because, uh, as it is, like we haven't even seen the push capabilities. Between her Manta style and Vanscore creating disruption illusions, there is so much non-committal push that you can do with this Medusa, where you just post up four illusions, have them siege high ground, and, wow, I did, like... Empire Hope don't really do anything with that one fight. Dragon Form's about to time out, so they can't take Roche. They don't take the mid-tier two, and Mars and Rubik are up now. So we'll see if Team Unique want to be the aggressors on this. Zitrax, he's had saved about 4,500 gold up. He's trying to finish off that butterfly. He's only a couple hundred away from that, so he'll farm the jungle, take out these neutrals, and eventually get the finish on that. So, Man, uh, what a shame. I was really hoping to see a very early Scotty, because I think Scotty would be amazing this game against uh, the Timbersaw and the DK, the heal reduction. He's got it queued up next, I think, though, if they would have swapped it, I think. Yeah, I would have been a little bit more excited, like Scotty into Butterfly or something like that. Because originally, I believe yeah. he had Butterfly BKB Divine just straight up like that without the Scotty. Okay, yeah. he'll. It looks like he will be going for it after... Oh, no, he's changing it around to go to the BKB. Don't go for the BKB, man. Let the rest of your team get the BKB. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Takes out the uh, He'll get it eventually. That's disappointing. Requeue that Divine Rapier. Give us some hope. Dragon Tail. 
now onto the Queen of Pain, the follow up with the Fissure and a Static Storm. Now 19 in a lot of trouble, but he pops the BKB. He now blinks away, has a Sonic Wave to fly through on the three of these heroes. He'll get the kill on Eknar, and now can they get anything more on this? They look over at Lights with so the Stone Gaze being used by Zitrax. As Lightless, uh, well, now without that Ricky, but a good Echo Slam on the two that will take the life of Vanscore. However, the rest of the team is falling fast. As James hits the deck, so does Lightless. Four have bit the dust, and now Mastery, he needs to keep himself alive. He's looking to go after Illusion, who's in his own little teeny tiny Elder Dragon form. He's uh, the younger brother of the DK right now, but now... Oh, oh he gets the stun. BZZ, triple kill for 19. The blink to cover the ground and get the stun on the TPing out. Timber saw, and I believe that ends up being a full team wipe plus the buyback on the disruptor. Uh, favorable yeah. for unique. Man, honestly, that Timber saw may have actually survived if he didn't start channeling the TP while he did the chain, because then that like signaled to Mars that he was like, okay, I just need to like figure out where the path was for that chain, and he's clearly standing right there for an easy spear. So Timber saw ends up going down, could have made maybe a little bit more space, and now they're gonna take Roche. And with Dragonform being down, I can't really see a way they can just, uh, can contest this. Tasake may go for a BKB steal, which is viable. Uh, he doesn't have his TP up, so if he goes for this, he's just gonna have to like find a way to walk out. But oh, he's emptying his inventory. Goes. Fissure, Arena, Tasake, hit with Telekinesis. They've got the agents into the hands as it tracks, and that's huge. They now look over the Ricky who goes after Vanscore, but Vanscore, he's got himself that ghost up to stay alive. Lightless now is sitting low, as is Tatake. They've got the smoke screen down, silencing up both the Queen of Pain as well as the Medusa. They'll give chase onto the DK. They're trying to do as much damage as they can. A good fissure from James, but three of these heroes are sitting very low and need to be careful because Mars goes on the back line. They'll pop the BKB on 19. They've got the Static Storm down from Eknark. They look over at Van Score to try and get the kill to the Shadow Demon, but they can't even get that just yet. The stun hits onto this Timber. Stops him from killing Van Score, but Tatake finally claims the life of the Shadow Demon. They get the kill onto the DK as well as the Timber, and they've gotten themselves a two for one and a very favorable situation with now the Aegis in the hands of Medusa. Yeah, they don't even lose that in the entire engagement. I, I respect the Ricky maneuvering for it, but I don't really see why DK felt the need to join the fight. If you don't have Dragon Form, you are just not useful as the DK. You're you're a halberd, and that's it. You, that, that's all you provide as a disarm, because there's no damage that this DK can do against this Medusa if he doesn't have his Dragon Form up. And now there's going to group at the bot tier 3. James gets caught out. 19 with another kill. He's on a mega kill streak. Tataki joins in, but uh, maybe ill-advised. Because the telekinesis comes through. The spear Whoa. throws him onto the low ground. That looks like there's a little bit of a wall that that should have connected to. However, Sonic Wave. Tataki with a lot of hurt. And they look to kill off Eknart. They buy back on James. The Fissure as well as the Arena. Mars is now the one in trouble, but BZZ starts to run away. The Blink Strike as well, the Diffuse Blade to slow him up, as well as the Silence. They've got the Tricks of the Trade right on top of BZZ to get the kill. They've deterred Unique, who have dove in a little bit too far. But, uh, well, I mean, just BZZ going down is not the worst thing in the world. Of course, on top of the fact that he got that Aegis for Zitrax, he then re queued up the Divine Rapier, knowing that he'd have that second life. Yeah, actually, that's not a... I, I don't think he can farm it up by the time that this Aegis duration lasts, though, so I don't really know how likely it is that the Aegis will influence his build decision. I think it's more that he just doesn't think he can die anymore. Even if he does not have the Aegis, he's just insanely tanky. He has BKB activated, and he gets the pick on Eknart. 19, hasted. We'll get out. That was close. He preemptively popped that BKB, thinking that somebody was going to come over, and that's exactly what happened. That BKB for the Queen of Pain is already six seconds. Yeah, but on the flip side, she is already level 20 also, so she is taking advantage of this early BKB timing, and then hopefully uh, the Mars will be able to complete a BKB. Okay, yeah, he puts it in his quick buy, so they can kind of shift the spell immune duties, and Mars will start taking over, uh, being face first in these fights, so... I don't know. Overall, Unique have just like consistently impressed me uh, throughout this entire game. Zitrax has been bulletproof on this Medusa pretty much after the landing phase and even during the landing phase. Uh, the Queen of Pain is consistently playing on the Razor's Edge, always just barely getting out of fights and being able to get big sonic waves off. And the Mars is doing a great job at initiating. I think he might have this Divine Rapier within the timing. He's got a minute 30 to... <clears throat> to oh. Okay, never mind. Well, if he's just gonna Wait, go I'm to okay the with this. Scotty instead. 
That, that was very disappointing because now he's got the divine. Now he's got the beekeeper. No, no. Somehow Medusa rapier had become commonplace now, and I'm actually more interested in seeing this guy eh? because I want to see like how how significantly does this affect uh, these team fights? Will he like specifically start to try to attack this timber saw just to get the debuff on it? The debuff lasts for. Wow, look at this. He's bullying a Timber Saw just right underneath his own tier 3, which normally Medusa cannot do. I don't know, you gotta put the debuff on him, bro. You're not at level 25 yet. You don't got the modifiers on Split Shot. Well, whatever, he'll just take this. I'll take the tier 3, and now coming around with that smoke is the side of Empire Hope that will go over to get 19, but he pops that BKB immediately after spotting the side of Team Empire Hope. They've hit the spear on a light list. He's now connected to the wall. The fissure comes in from a distance, but they've got the stone gaze. They get the kill on Aknard as well as Lightless. They have got Take in their sights. He goes out of their sights with the troops to the trade, but the damage is in and the damage is there. And they get the kill on the Tatake, forcing the GG call from Empire Hope. So Team Unique taking game one. Very confidently. Excellent positioning by that Rubik. He was basically in the specific spot that would be useful for breaking a smoke. 